Hey everybody, welcome to the shooting range. Uh, we're gonna be testing out the Barnes 155 LRX with Winchester Stay Ball 6.5. Uh, this is coming out of a 20 inch barrel, one in seven twist. Um, we'll be shooting at 100 yards today and we'll be shooting for velocities, extreme spread and center deviations. Um, I'm anticipating well over 2,800 feet per second uh, for most of these loads. Um, Minimum charge weight is 57 grains, and the max charge weight that I'm going to try out today is 60 grains. We'll also be checking for pressure signs just to make sure that we're not overworking the brass. Uh, also, if you are interested in how I got to this point with uh, load development, I have another video with the initial load development uh, with Winchester Stable 6.5 in this bullet. Uh, if you're also interested in a different powder that I used, Hodgson's H4831 Shortcut, and my results with that powder with the Barnes 155 LRX. I also have two videos um, regarding that as well. Those videos are posted to my channel and ready for your viewing. I wasn't seeing any pressure signs, uh, significant pressure signs that concerned me uh, with that 60 grain uh, powder charge. So I'm going to use the rest of the bullets that I have and load up three more powder charge weights, uh, 60.5, 61, and 61.5. I've got those loaded up and I'm going to run out to the shooting range and get those on paper so we can see what those look like. So of course I get out here and I forget my tripod for my camera, my target camera. Uh, so I'm just going to shoot these, I'll bring the target back to the reloading room, and I'll show you guys uh, what they produced. Alright guys, we are back from the shooting range with this morning's results. Uh, so at the 16.5 grain mark, and all this will be on the screen for you, uh, average velocity of 29.26, uh, extreme spread of 31 feet per second, and a group of 0.96. Um, 61 grains was 29.52, extreme spread of 58 feet per second in a group of 0.53. And the last one, 61 and a half grains was an average velocity of 29.28, um, extreme spread of 36 feet per second and a group of 0.86. Now one shot on the 61.5 grains did go over 3,000 feet per second. So that's pretty neat. You know, we hit 3,000 with, uh, with a 20 inch barrel and a 155 grain bullet, but that was at the cost of uh, some primer cratering, and I'll show a couple photos here, but yes, yeah, so we've definitely reached that max limit to where you're starting to show powder or, um, pressure signs. Okay, recapping our data. Um, mediocre results with this bullet. Uh, there were a couple load charges that did show potential, and those load charges were, and what I mean by potential were um, good group sizes and good extreme spread standard deviations. Uh, that was at the 58 grain mark. Um, 
extreme spread of 11, standard deviation of 6.1, and a group size of 0.46 inches. And the other low charge was 59 and a half grains at 13 for an extreme spread, a standard deviation of seven feet per second, and a group size of 0 0.63 inches. Um, with those two charges, if I had some more bullets, uh, I would go and uh, do some seating depth tests, tests to see if I couldn't uh, tighten those uh, groups up a little bit and see if I can't get, couldn't get consistent results. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any more bullets, but uh, going forward, I may order some more bullets and do a seating depth test with those two powder charges uh, to see what the rifle likes. You know, the only issue I have with these lighter bullets, uh, especially, well, particularly the Barnes 155 grain is, you know, they don't have as good as ballistic coefficient as the heavier bullets, specifically the 170 Burger EOLs. Uh, in order, and in order to match the downrange terminal performance, like kinetic energy on target, uh, that the burgers are giving me at 2,700 feet per second. I'd have to be pushing these Barnes bullets uh, right around that 2,975 to 3,000 feet per second to match uh, the downrange kinetic energy. And that's asking a lot out of my 20 inch barrel. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna put these bullets kind of on the back burner. Uh, you'll see a video more than likely in the future just revisiting uh, these bullets, but I do wanna continue forward with uh, two more bullets and that is the Nosler 165 ABLR and the Hammer Hunter 150, or the Hammer Bullets, the 156 Hammer Hunter. Uh, my vision is I would like to get a good load put together for a copper monolithic bullet. Uh, and I started with the Burger or the Barms 155 LRX and we're getting there, but uh, it's just not like super good results across the board. It's, it's hit and miss. So that's why that's on the back burner. And I would like to try doing um, the 156 Hammer Hunter. Um, in my previous videos early on, you guys loved the heck out of the Hammer uh, Hunter uh, reloading sessions. I had like the 162 and the 168 Hammer Hunters. Um, so anyway, my quest to get a, a good monolithic bullet for the 6.8 Western loaded up is on the radar that I would like to share with you guys. And then on the other side of the coin, um, I would like to get a good bonded bullet uh, load put together for the guys that like hunting with bonded bullets and not particularly bullets that tend to fragment uh, such as like um, or expand really quickly like the Nosler 170 ballistic tips or the Burger 170 EOLs. So uh, comment below what you guys want the path to be taken. Do you guys want me to do my next video to be on the 156 Hammer Hunters or do you want me to get the 165 Nosler uh, ABLRs um, loaded up. All right, I think that's it for today. That's all I have for you. I think I hit everything. If I didn't, you guys have any questions, please um, comment uh, and I'll get, you know, I'm really good at answering you guys' comments and other people can chime in as well. Um, I've had a huge number of subscribers over the past week, so thank you so much for that. Um, I've had a lot of feedback on my other questions with uh, my top load development videos, so that's going to be my priority after a couple more um, load development videos because I want to try getting as many um, um, good loads in that load list uh, for you as possible. And then um, I'll definitely do a rifle breakdown. I had a couple of people wanting to do that, but um, for the, especially for the new subscribers that are just coming on wanting to know what I'm shooting, I'll do that later. Uh, but definitely the priority is going to be um, a load, a list of load developments or a list of good loads for the 6.8 Western that I've had. Um, anyway, thanks guys for watching. Uh, once again, go ahead and uh, subscribe, share. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Thanks for your support and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.